Hey guys, welcome to Around the World. I'm Eric and in this video I'd like to show you some amazing must-see or do highlights here in Bangkok. Let's go! Bangkok, Thailand's capital with more than 10 million inhabitants, is a city that has it all. Tradition, luxury, green parks and busy streets. It's an abundance of temples, exciting canals and so much good street food. So where to begin our highlights tour? Well. What about the King Power Mahanakon, one of Thailand's tallest buildings? Luckily, you don't have to walk its stunning 77 floors by foot. Just step in the elevator and it takes you all the way up in less than a minute. And honestly, the elevator is a true experience on its own. Once upstairs, it takes you to the 74th floor where you can enjoy a wonderful panoramic view and see all of Bangkok's beautiful landmarks. But you're not watching this video if you wouldn't enjoy a true 360 experience of Bangkok. So let's go to the upper deck. For thrill seekers, there's this glass tray experience for a bird's eye view at 310 meters above ground level. I can still feel myself sweating like a turkey at Christmas just by looking at it. And that's not because of the hot temperatures out here. But of course, you're here for the outdoor 360 degrees observation deck. This is the highest point, 314 meters above ground level. We've made it. Now you've seen Bangkok. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you… Nah, just kidding. This is just the beginning. Let's jump on a boat and discover Bangkok from a whole different angle. Welcome in one of Bangkok's iconic canal boats, or klong boats as they are called. For centuries, the web of canals, or klongs, throughout the city were used as the primary means of transportation. In the early 1900s, the city gradually stopped dredging new canals and started filling in others to pave the way for cars. But the city has not forgotten its waterborne roots. Klong boats remain a popular means of getting around. Around 300,000 trips are taken per day on Bangkok's network of waterways. That's why Bangkok is also called the Venice of the East. Taking a Klong boat allows you to see Bangkok from a whole different perspective. Tours take you through different districts and neighborhoods, offering a wide variety of views. Whether it's tiny wooden houses, big villas, schools, temples or skyscrapers, it's a completely different experience seeing it all from the clones instead of seeing it from the streets. So sit back, relax and enjoy a tour through Bangkok's ancient waterways. Bangkok is overwhelming and so are its temples. There are literally thousands of them. So you can spend days and days hopping from one to the other and be amazed every time. But for those of you with limited time and energy, I've listed the most iconic and impressive ones in this video, like this one, the Wat Prak Kew and Grand Palace. This place is overwhelming both in size and fine detail. The Wat Prak Kew, also known as the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, started its construction in 1783. It is home to the Prasi Ratana Chedi, a traditional stupa covered with gold mosaic tiles imported from Italy. Inside the stupa are relics of the Buddha. Right next to the Wat Prak Kew is the Grand Palace. This used to be the residence of the former kings of Thailand, but is now used for official events. It is pretty impressive. One fun detail that I came across was this bus stop shaped tiny temple with stairs leading down to, well, two meters above the ground? This was for the king to get on the back of his elephant. You don't see that every day on ordinary places in Europe. But it amazed me so much that I'm thinking about building one at home just to get on my bike. How cool would that be? Talking about bikes, did you know besides foot, taxi or metro, another trendy way of getting around in Bangkok is by bicycle. 
That's right, it's something I can definitely recommend, because it gets you to places where you'd probably not go yourself. Discover Bangkok's smallest streets while trying to zigzag your way through old local neighborhoods, bumps in the roads and scooters that seem to come from everywhere. Smell the local Thai kitchens, see the beauty, the dirt and the true diversity that makes Bangkok a city like no other. But right when you think you've seen it all, a typical Klong boat takes you to the other side of the river and you get immersed in a completely different world. This is Bang Kachau, also referred to as the Green Lung of Bangkok, and I don't think that needs any extra explanation. This place is quiet, green and feels completely remote. A welcome change after being immersed in the vibrant city vibes of Bangkok. Many roads are only accessible by foot or bike, so no cars here, just an occasional scooter. Keep both hands on your steering wheel though, because getting off track here is not recommended. Alright, back to the bus again. If you like shopping, Shatushak Weekend Market is the place to be. With over 200,000 people visiting Shatushak Market every weekend, this Bangkok marketplace has become the world's largest weekend market. The market has over 15,000 stalls ranging from food, art, antiques, fashion and more. This is a place where you get overwhelmed by the colors, smells and tastes. People from all over the world come here to get a taste of Bangkok. So even if you don't buy a thing, but just stand still and look around, it is still a dazzling experience. But don't let that scare you off. When you need to cool down from this vibrant market, Shatushak Park is right around the corner. Here you can take a little walk, enjoy some quiet time on a bench or drink a refreshing iced coffee in one of the coffee shops. I can hardly imagine, but if you didn't find what you were looking for at the Shatushak weekend market, or you like shopping but walking not so much, then treat yourself and visit a floating market. By now, you should feel pretty comfortable in a Klong boat, so why not take one to do some shopping? Floating markets have been around for ages, especially when water transport played an important role in daily life. But today most of them are mainly tourist attractions, especially this largest and most popular one in the whole of Thailand, the Dam Nguyen Saduak Floating Market. It was a bit too touristy for me actually, and I was hoping to see more of a local tradition, but none of that was really the case. To me, it felt more like I was floating in one big sales funnel. So to be honest, the part I enjoyed most was my way back at full speed. Gosh, these boats go fast. Lastly, if your thirst for shopping still hasn't been quenched, the Icon Siam Mall is the place to be. Even for non-shoppers like me, this is an inspiring experience. Once inside, you get overwhelmed by luxury and design. The food court almost feels like being in an adventurous theme park. Look how beautifully this place is decorated. If you take the escalator upstairs, you get immersed in luxury and art. All premium brands, from Versace and Porsche to Dior and Louis Vuitton, amongst many, many others, can be found here. So, if you got some Thai baht to spend, then say hello to heaven and have your wallet rest in peace. Alright, back to some culture. I told you I would take you to the most important temples of Bangkok. And Wat Po is one you should not miss. The Wat Po Temple is also known as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha. Not to be confused with the Temple of the Recycling Buddha, because seriously, there's nothing to be recycled here. Wat Po is one of the oldest and largest temples of Bangkok, completed in the 16th century 
and is home to more than 1,000 Buddha images, as well as one of the largest single Buddha at 46 meters, which we'll get to in a minute. First, I'd like to show you Prayubu Sot, the main hall used for performing Buddhist rituals and the most sacred building of the complex. This place is an abundance of gold, crystals and wall art. It is really impressive. Take a seat on the soft red carpet and let the serenity sink in. Remember never to point your feet to the Buddha, since that is considered to be very rude in Thailand. But the main highlight of the Wat Po is the reclining Buddha. It is a 46 meters long and 15 meters high statue representing the entry of Buddha into Nirvana and the end of all reincarnations. It is no surprise that this is one of the largest Buddha statues in Thailand. Another temple that is at least as photogenic is Wat Arun. It is hard to overlook since it is located on the west bank of the Chao Phraya River. Many people in beautiful clothes take their Instagram-worthy photos here. The complex has several pranks, all high and shiny enough to catch and reflect the first sunlight of the morning. The temple is therefore also known as the Temple of Dawn. But if you're up for a temple with some more excitement, then Wat Chakrawat in Chinatown, also known as the Crocodile Temple, is the place to be. While temple fatigueness lurks when visiting too many temples in Bangkok, even in this video, there's one more temple I'd like to recommend. Like all the other temples, this place is beautifully crafted and an abundance of fine details and frills are everywhere to be found. But there's one thing I didn't expect to find in a Buddhist temple. Crocodiles. Look at these creatures. They seem to be meditating all day, but don't be fooled. The legend goes that this temple origins from a monk trying to spare a crocodile's life by giving it refuge under his house when locals hunted it down because of its appetite for humans. Yeah, remember that when you're standing face to face this close with such a powerful creature. But Bangkok's Chinatown has some safe things to offer as well, such as this beautiful gate at the Tree Mid Road next to the Golden Buddha Temple. Walk its busy main streets that are even more spectacular during nighttime when all the neon lights light up the sky. Or what I personally like is getting a small bite from its amazing complex of markets and unique shopping places. I love the confusion of being in Thailand but feeling like I'm in China. Another place in which I find myself immersed in a different world is Bangkok's flower market. I stumbled upon this place by accident, thought I was entering a movie set, but then suddenly found myself surrounded by colors and scents I had not experienced before. It is crowded and full of liveliness. People are weaving and creating true pieces of art from flowers everywhere you look. Think of the thousands of temples in Bangkok where flowers are offered every day. Well, they need to be produced somewhere. And that place is right here in the heart of Bangkok. Ready for some action? Although Thai people are generally quite modest, there's one place where all of that goes overboard. If you want to see Thai people go nuts, go visit a Mai Thai boxing match. And the Raja Damner Mai Thai Stadium in Bangkok is the place to be. This is certainly not for the faint-hearted, because this traditional sport is far from gentle. Enjoy the cultural music being played by a live band, see the respect amongst the athletes, and enjoy the crowd going wild while you try to wrap your head around what's happening. When you need some time to recover from this, or when you'd like to get active yourself without getting hurt too much, Saranrom Park is the place to be. See Bangkokians doing their exercises early in the morning or after working hours. Aerobics, yoga, running and fitness are all practiced here. But also badminton or playing ping pong gets widely performed here. This park is full of life, especially in the late afternoon or evening when temperatures drop slightly. Do some exercises yourself and notice quickly that the heat and humidity will tire you more than the exercise itself. 
Luckily, there are enough seats in the park to enjoy all activities from a distance as well. Alright, this might not seem like it, but welcome to the most touristy place in all of Bangkok, Koh San Road. Koh San Road should definitely be on your list if you like clubbing. It might not seem like the bustling place that you heard about in stories now, but this road transforms as soon as the sun sets. Watch this. You really find everything here. From fried insects to a nitrous oxide shot, tattoos and everything in between. Have a beer or a traditional pad thai dish in the evening and watch the madness pass you by. Chances are that you have seen or heard about this place before, the Maiklong Railway Market. Although it's a little drive, about an hour from Bangkok, I recommend putting this on your list because it's an experience like no other. This market is built on an active railway line. The train passes six times a day, forcing all vendors to move their goods and umbrellas away from the tracks. Hence the nickname Umbrella Pulldown Market. It is fascinating every time it happens. And not only seeing the train passing by is worth a visit. The market itself is one of the largest fresh seafood markets in Thailand. Fish is getting prepared in front of your eyes with all the smells that come with it. Also, many vegetables and all sorts of other colorful local products can be found here. It's a great place where tourists and locals blend perfectly. Let's finish this video with one other high highlight of Bangkok and one last temple I'd like to recommend. That is, if you're not shy of climbing stairs. Wat Saket, also known as the Golden Mount Temple, is built on a steep artificial hill inside the Wat Saket compound. But the way to the top is as beautiful as the view on the top itself. It feels like walking the stairway to heaven. But it's not these 344 steps that bring you all the way up to the top. Once inside, there's a little door and corridor that leads up to... a giant golden shetty with relics of Buddha inside. Hear the bells ring in the wind, see how monks and locals pray, Enjoy the 360-degree view of Bangkok, because, let's be honest, what a city! So that's it. If you like this video, then give it your thumbs up. It really helps. Subscribe if you also like to join me on upcoming trips. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you around.